Welcome to Pro Practice, your guide to piano mastery. I'm Josh Wright, and today's episode is based on Moshkovsky's Opus 36, number six, commonly referred to as Etincel or Sparks. And this uh, has a lot of variations in different uh, recordings you'll hear on YouTube. Volados has his own arrangement of this. Horowitz does a lot of embellishments on this in his uh, famous Moscow concert uh, late in life. I believe it was from that concert. You can find that recording very easily on YouTube. Uh, Mikhail Plebnev takes a lot of Horowitz's ideas as well. I'm going to be sticking to the original um, just because those other uh, arrangements are copyrighted. Uh, but in case you're wondering what this sounds like, if you haven't heard it before or just need a little refresher... We will be going over all sorts of uh, techniques today. The first thing that I want to really drive home is that good fingering in this piece can make or break uh, the end result, okay? Because you've, you hear a lot of recordings. You aren't going to be able to do that fast of a tempo or that's... Is really tough material if you're not following a solid fingering. Also, um, like this section, if you don't have a good chordal technique and you don't know how to loosen the wrist for chords, uh, that's going to <laughs> prove to be quite difficult, as well as um, some of the distributions here. So we're going to be going over a lot of tips with fingering, how to dis distribute and divide things, some uh, methods for loosening the wrist. We are going to be going over how to get lighter. That's one of the most important things. If you listen to Volados' recordings, he is so light. It's like he's barely even touching the keys. Quite incredible. And um, there are a few little tricky spots, uh, especially toward the end, this little spot. And by the way, I've only worked on this for a few weeks. I'm learning this uh, due to, uh, I first of all, love the piece. And second of all, someone asked me to do a pro practice tutorial on this. I'm very selective with which new pieces I learn for pro practice tutorials, but I thought this would go well on an upcoming concert I have in a few months. Um, just to break up some longer, more lyrical pieces. So I decided to learn this, these little passages. Can prove to be really tricky to get the clarity in there. So we'll be going over some methods that I'm currently using uh, to um, improve on those as well. So this piece is quite repetitive. So we'll go through the first iteration of each little miniature section and then we might go over a few ideas about how to vary those uh, dynamically but we'll also get into the dynamics and and possible ways of shaping each of these phrases as we go through it let's just start at the beginning and i'm going to take this tutorial at a medium tempo and then at the end we will go over some methods to to really up that speed but i want to take it at a medium tempo because this piece still sounds great in this tempo. Okay, and it can be a really valuable etude to get students started on um, this type of finger work, this passage work that they're going to need for things like these types of Chopin etudes. Okay, or this one. A lot of those, uh, this would make a great prerequisite piece for those. Okay, so the first thing, we don't want to hammer with the same finger when we're playing repeated notes. So I'd probably start with three, two, three, two, three, two, three, two. You can use whatever you want on the left. I think I just switch between two and three. I do two on the first one, three, three. Okay, now this next part, 
You have a couple of options with fingers. Um, be careful if you're going to use thumbs in here to not accent your thumb. That's a common issue that I see. I, I like to use my thumb in the left hand, so I'm gonna go, I'm gonna take that first A in the right, and then three, two, one, two, three, four, 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 three. Okay, so. Okay. How do we get it to sound like that? Versus. Kind of mush, like what I hear a lot of students bring this to me as. Or. Being really heavy on those. Uh, this is going to apply to the chords as well. The Your best friend is going to be finger staccato. First of all, <laughs> you have a lot of staccatos written in that you're gonna use this technique for anyway. But also practicing. Sorry. Oh yeah, right there. I just take three, two, and then two, three, four, five, one. Two, three, four, five, one. So I do a little bit different on that last, um, the second iteration of those uh, ascending scales. So finger staccato, what you want to do, a lot of people email me at saying, I feel really tense when I do finger staccato. Well, if you're doing finger staccato, like you're pulling back hard and you're gripping, like you're hitting your palm hard um, or really pulling that finger back aggressively, that can cause a lot of tension. So all the f that I'm talking about, it's just kind of grabbing the keys, just like you would in like Scarlatti Sonata K141. Okay, so it's that same. softer there. I, I tend to go up on one of these and the second one be, sorry, that was terrible. Um, to be a little softer just to create some uh, dynamic differences. Okay, same types of issues on these intervals here. Practice just stroking back slightly. So the whole purpose is you want to go to a neutral hand position. You don't want to be just stretched out and kind of like a claw. You want it to be releasing into neutral positions. Okay, and I like I like to use open fingerings here. A lot of times I'll advocate more closed fingerings. Closed fingerings being like five or four um, on top and always having one on the bottom. Uh, that's not always the case. That's not necessarily a super uh, closed fingering to have four on top, but we don't need five one on all of these. I like the more open fingering. Five, two, three, one. Five, two, four, one. Three, two, five, one. And then you can switch if you like here. I think I just jump down to there. Five, one, five, one, four, one, and then go to three, two. But if you like it, you can switch. You can go five, one, four, one, five, one, four, one, three, two. Okay, so it's up to you. But I would for sure keep these open so each measure feels like that and you could even do as a, a silly little practice method that will really help you is all I'm doing is I'm blocking all the notes from the measure as I play all these left hand notes in left hand I would do something like five one three two one three two sorry one five two three five one three two five one four, three, and then I just go uh, two, three, four. So two, one, two, three, four, 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 five, one, five, five. And you could totally do five, four there. I just found that the five, five felt comfortable in my hand, but whatever you want to use there. And then one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, five, one. Five two one five two one. Okay, 
I know that we are really belaboring this fingering, but it's so important to have the right setup for a piece like this. If you don't, you're gonna get too tight too soon. I mean, on the next page, for instance, using, using open fingerings, and that is critical. I mean, you don't want to use it. You don't want it to be so open that you're really tight. Like three, two, one. I'd probably go five, two, one, four, two, one, five, three, two, five, three, two, four, one. So you can rock between positions. Let's see. Um, like right there, three, two, one, five. If I was doing five, five, it would immediately tighten my hand. Whereas three, two, one, five, three, two. Same thing there. Okay, so same concepts throughout the whole piece. Think of that open fingering. Think of the path of least resistance, something that you're going to be able to facilitate getting into those new positions quite easily. Okay, uh, how do we get lighter? Uh,